final draft video of the year. Let's yeah. go. What's up, everybody? Welcome to tonight's new stream of the week, Tuesday night action. First report, myself, my co-host, Cowboys Corner in the house. What's going on, Cowboys Corner? Hey, what's going on, man? I, I'm just – the draft is over. It's a sad, sad day, but it opens the door, Joe, to new beginnings. Yes, new beginnings indeed, and this is where we're going to kick off. This is our final draft show of – the draft season, we're putting a ribbon on it, Mike. But today, we're going to break down how these 11 draft picks, you know, could um, could fall into the 55-man 55, the 55 roster and that sort of thing. So we're going to break down each pick, 11 picks in total, and see where do they fit on this roster, who are they going to be camp battling with, who's, who's, who's in, who might be in, who, who's more of a practice squad kind of guy. And who might just flat out get cut, if if possible. So, guys, shout out to everybody in the chat box. Do appreciate all you guys for rocking with us during our two day draft show. That was that was a lot of fun, guys. Had a lot of fun with that, Mike. So, yeah, before we get to, before we get started, yeah. Mike, any any uh, opening comments before we get started here on our draft class? No, congrats to our uh, raffle winners again. That yes, was clutch. that was clutch. Congratulations, uh, hey everybody, everybody, Soup Trap, everybody, uh, Mario Flores, I see him in here, Chris Gons right there, guys, just thank you guys for for watching us, continue watching us, and a lot of our stuff that we had played out, Joe, played out, I mean, we were calling picks before it would happen, I, I think we got a lot of those picks down as, as it was happening. Yeah, man, it was a lot of fun, bro, like, you know, obviously the draft always has those uh, surprises. And uh, we definitely, we definitely had those. <laughs> the water, had those. water. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, without further ado, let's get let's break let's break down our draft class here. Just I'm gonna put it here on the screen, Mike, and give us a little reminder of of what we're working with here. Uh, let me go ahead and get this going here for our 2021 draft class. Eleven picks. Here we are on the screen. And uh, let's break. We're gonna break each one of these down, guys. All right. So round one, Mike. Michael Parsons, the linebacker. What's your thought on how he fits on this roster, fifty-five man roster? That's yeah, what yeah, for sure, man. I I really think he's gonna do some great things for us as a Mike linebacker. That's where I'm predicting Micah Parsons to be. Joe is the Mike. Now he can cover. He can cover uh, and play any Sam or Will and Mike position on the defense, right? Um, I see him as a, a Mike guy, a Mike Will guy, depending on what they're running, Tampa 2 or zone or cover 3. Uh, I see him moving all the way around on the field. But his main priority to me, Joe, is that blitzing, using that 4-3 speed on, on the edge, in the middle, blitzing. I really think Micah Parsons is going to be <laughs> that type of guy for me. Yeah, absolutely, man. Michael Parsons, you know, um, I, I think it's it's a pretty good pick. You know, I, I we've we've gone a couple of days here past the draft, <clears throat> and uh, you know, you got you got to support these guys for the most part. You know, we'll, we'll get into the rest of these the rest of these guys, but Michael Parsons, first round pick, you expect him to, I would say, start right out the gate. So yeah, you know, your your Mike, your Will, your Sam. I mean, he has that flex. So really, the guys on notice here will be. You know, um, Jalen Smith, obviously, you know, um, he's just a better linebacker right now than, than both those guys. So LVE, if he can stay healthy, that guy is really good. But his health has just been very prohibitive. And then, of course, we've got uh, 
Keanu Neal in the mix. So it, it's a pretty good linebacker core now. I like that. You got, you know, Gifford in the mix as well. So Michael Parsons, definitely 55 man roster clincher right there. So he, he's in there, Mike. Um, round two, Kelvin Joseph, everybody. Yeah, how, do you, how do you feel about the Kelvin Joseph pick? Mike, how do you feel he fits into the roster? I told you. I told you. Oh, man. Great show. But uh, if you watch draft night on, on day two, you, you'll know what that meant. But, no, uh, Kelvin Joseph, man, I, I, I like it. Playing opposite of Trayvon Diggs, um, I, I really think um, – I really think, man, that this these corners, Joe, with Trayvon and with Kelvin, I'm not gonna really lose any sleep. And we could talk about the other players, but main point is they took care of the front seven, right? And we'll talk about the other players later. They took care of the front seven. That's only gonna help Trayvon Diggs and help Kelvin Joseph. That's it. I mean, that's how you fix. You don't have to draft a safety if you got a fantastic front seven. Yeah. And so, so that is the story here, right? The safety, you know, supposedly they were going to trade up for Tyson Campbell. Campbell would have given them that flex to play safety or cornerback. So if they went Campbell there, they may have had a, a, a true safety targeted later. But, um, you know, it, it's interesting how, how this draft shaped up and Kelvin Joseph fell in their lap. You know what I mean? So you kind of have to go with the staff here. You know, it is the roll the dice round. We, we've been talking about this the whole time. We, we've had polls on it. You know, who could be there? Gregory Russo, Calvin Joseph, um, Caleb Farley. So ultimately, you know, these uh, they went with it. They went with Calvin Joseph. They rolled the dice. And by rolling the dice, we really mean like concentrating on on, on the field versus the rap career, right? We're, we're, we're not talking like any like crazy stuff off the field where he's like shooting guns or having these kinds of crazy issues. So you know, it's people have their, you know, their their takes on Kelvin Joseph, but on the field, this guy should have been in the first round. So to get him in the second round here, it's good. It's good, and 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 thank God we got him because we didn't. None of us really wanted to go with you know Anthony Anthony Brown <laughs> opposite of Trayvon Diggs. So right. So for him, Kelvin Joseph definitely he he'll be on the fifty five man roster, so he can. You can put that in stone there. Uh, obviously, there's going to be competition, but these early guys, bro, like they're de you, you have to imagine like it would be like a super disappointment if some of these early guys didn't make the roster. So, Kelvin Joseph, you know, for my part, you know, opposite of Trayvon Diggs, Mike. It's it's deadly. It's deadly. If that front seven can play up to the expectation that we're thinking they're going to play up. It's deadly. Indeed. Indeed. Moving on to round three, Mike. Osa Odigizua, the defensive tackle out of the UCLA. I, I really like this pick here. You know, um, what's your take on Osa? Osa Odigizua, Joe? <laughs> Look, I've been practicing. You, you nailed it, bro. <laughs> yes, sir. And I can say it. I can keep saying it. Osa Odigizua. I've been practicing, right? But no, shout out to Vaj Lombardi. He put out some... Great film on Osa Odigizua here, and uh, yeah. and I mean the 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 guy is a straight monster. He's a straight beast, um, taking on double teams like nobody's business, and moving both of these grown men that's supposed to be blocking them all the way back, Joe, all the way back. Um, but uh, you know, cow a lot of Cowboy fans are saying Cowboys got three starters. Joe, I, I, I think they got more than three, Joe. But I, I'll tell you my starters at the end of the show here. But uh, Odigizua, uh, I really like him. I really like what he could do. A lot of people are like, there's no, there's never been a DLI that's been good out of UCLA, but what? Right? But uh, give this guy a chance. This, this guy's going to be something special. I really believe that. I, I really, I really do like that that impersonation. Uh, it's it's really good, and, and and it really is, you know, part of the discussion, right? Yeah, when the initial picks come in, just because of the pick that they had their sights on didn't get picked, they 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 take it really personal, right? So, you you kind of have to, yeah, you have to have a quick turnaround time on on you know, waking up and then getting on board with these guys and. Uh, Osa Digizua, Mike, I, I like him as well. So, you know, he'll be in the mix. 
is a three tech. You know, there's there's no uh, assurances of what Tristan Hill will be. You know, he, he is part of a the previous administration. This will be his basically his third what defensive coordinator, or whatever. And um, you know, can he stay healthy? Can can Tristan Hill stay healthy? He's he's kind of getting kind of getting dinged up here already. So I like him in the mix, man. And I think that uh, that wrestler background that everybody talks about, it, it's a real thing. You know what I mean? Like you play with leverage. He's got the long arms, so he's able to manipulate those guards and centers with the leverage and bust up plays in the backfield and, and bring pressure on the way. So I like it. Now all of a sudden we're, we're having a bolstered up defensive tackle room. You know, we, we have Brett Urban, the run stuffer. And then, uh, you know, obviously Neville Gallimore year two, that's going to be monstrous. Osa Digizua in the mix, Tristan Hill. And then, and then the other guys I think will be battling it out. I think that's where the battle really starts happening uh, outside of those guys. I think it's going to be Antoine Woods battling for his life, uh, Davis, um, Bohanna, and, and some of these other guys on the fringe. So we'll, we'll talk about that there. Mike. Also, dig is a 55 man roster guy. I, 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 I say so. Absolutely. Next on, on the draft here, Chauncey Golston, the defensive end of Iowa, the defensive stalwart. What do you think about that one there, Chauncey Golston? Yeah, when we drafted him, Joe, you said this is the Tyron Crawford of the draft right here. Moving all yeah. over the defensive line, you turn on the tape, Joe, you exactly see that. The guy. The guy could play anywhere on the defensive line. He, you know, he could. He, I even think he could be a stand-up three-four guy too, and, and go go get the passer that way too, Joe. Uh, the guy is very versatile, um, in, in all positions. Uh, and this is what the see see. This is why I like this draft, and this is what people are missing, right? They think because Goldston we drafted with the third round, Joe, we used that Philadelphia Eagle pick in the third round that this guy's going to be a starter. The Dallas Cowboys, Joe, they've been lacking depth. They've been lacking depth. And with Goldston, they got quality depth. It don't necessarily mean he has to be a starter. We're, we're, Cowboy fans are wired so wrong and different. You, you plug you plug in a Cowboy fan to a light socket, the whole house is going to explode because all the wires are wrong, right? Like, you got to think outside the box sometimes. Goldston is that depth that we've been missing. This is mm -hmm. good. Good stuff here. I like it. Yeah, I, I really like the Golston pick. I was I wanted either one of these guys. I liked from Iowa. I really liked the linebacker Nick Neiman. I liked uh, Davion Nixon, and I liked Chauncey Golston. So, and he was another one of the Senior Bowl guys. So the Cowboys like to go to that well. They like to go into the Senior Bowl well, and they came out with one here, uh, Chauncey Golston. So, yeah, definitely, you know. Definitely your Tyron Crawford guy, you know, somebody that's going to give you run defense, you know, kind of what Crawford did. And he'll he'll sprinkle in some sacks along the way. He's not going to be a high sack guy, you know. Yeah. But that's that's what, what uh, Crawford was, you know what I mean? So it's it's a good replacement. It's an upgrade over Tyron, in my opinion. And it comes from a good program. These guys are really coached up really well coming out of Iowa. They're pro-ready right out the gate. So – it's it's a good uh, the learning curve shouldn't be too big for Golston. I really like that pick, Mike. I, I think he will be. I think he'll be on the fifty five man roster at the end of the day. Yep, fifty three. Yeah, fifty five man roster, fifty three game playing, just rotation of police. Get Antoine Woods out of here. <laughs> Indeed. Now, getting down to the nitty gritty, getting down to it, baby, getting down to so possibly. One of the more, um, you know, controversial type picks, whether you want to call it a head scratcher or, you know, let's wait and see kind of thing. The to end it to end the third round, you know, they went with Nashawn Wright, the lengthy, lanky cornerback out of Oregon State, Mike. Nashawn Wright. What do you think about that one there? Yeah, you know, when. So I just talked about Trayvon Diggs, right? I just told we just talked about Kelvin Joseph. They, then they get a long corner in Deshaun Wright. I don't see him as long as he is playing the slot. Maybe they use him as sub packages for bigger receivers and tight ends, Joe. Um, 
maybe they stash him and, and, and let him beef up a little bit, gain a little bit of weight. You know, I, I don't know the game plan for Nishan Wright. I don't know if he makes a 53 man roster. Uh, I, I, I don't, I, I just don't know this. Um, but I mean, when they announced the pick, me and you were like, I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> yeah, nobody did. Yeah. And but you know you 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 look at some other things and you know you're hearing great things. You still have fans that are a little mad. I'm not gonna dog on the guy because I still don't know a lot about him. Really don't. Yeah, yeah. No, I I feel the same way, Mike. I think that it's, it's uh, you know I, I did watch two of his games and I thought you know it, it was okay. He's he's got some traits to work with. You know he's got the speed. He's got the length. He he plays the ball really well. I think he's got some ball hawking capabilities. So um, there's there's things there to like for him, right? But this one really did seem kind of like you're kind of projecting the position, you know. Obviously, could he be Sherman? And that's you don't want to put the pressure on on the kid like no that. Like, can you be a Richard Sherman? These these types of guys. So like, and I, he, I, yeah. that's one of the things that I hate about getting these Seattle guys. There's always that that freaking. Uh, comparison to the Legion of Boom guys. That's the one thing I hated about Richard and we got Quinn here and everybody's like, this is the next this. Can he be the next this? Like, let these guys be their own guys. And I think Dan Quinn kind of kind of said that in his uh, press conference, right? Like, right, right on the head with that. And, uh, you know, the whole thing with they picked Molden over to Sean Wright. Guys, they not, they're, weren't, they're not dead set on Molden. He's a smaller guy. They don't fit what they're looking for. They just don't. You know, we're going to hold a grudge over this right versus molding comparison, it, it's, it, it has the glove has to fit. This isn't OJ Simpson's trial case. The glove has to fit. If it doesn't fit, you must you get it. Quit. Hey, dude. So, so Nashawn Wright. So, I think this one for me, Mike. Um, it's a high pick. You you would hope that he would make the fifty five. This one to me is a to be determined. I, I'm hoping he is. I would hate to waste a third rounder, but I think they're going to find a way to get him on here. Now, I think his biggest competition would probably be Reggie Robinson, who, you know, for whatever reason, the previous staff didn't want to put him on the field. But the, the Reggie Robinson, we can't sleep on him. That guy is a ball hawker, too, a special team ace. And, um, you know, they, they we got a little glimpse of him at the end of the season, and there, there's some stuff there to work with him. So, the Sean Wright. You know, you definitely do need depth, though, Mike. You know, we talked about the Diggs brothers having, you know, foot issues. You know, Stefan, Trevon, they have these foot issues, right? So you do need to protect yourself. And, and, you know, we did say we need to double dip at linebacker and at cornerback. And they did. And they got both. They did double dip at both. So thank God for that. You do protect yourself there. So I think at the end of the day, I, I think he will make the 55-man roster. Is he a rotational guy? I think he's more of a rotational guy, but who – I mean, I'm fine with that. A third-rounder, yeah. that's that's good quality stuff yeah. there. So I'm going to give him a chance, guys. You know, it, it, it was a little bit of a head-scratcher, but I'm definitely going to give him a shot here, you know, and see see what he does. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to bury the kid, so. Well, you know, but here's my whole thing with draft picks. You could draft the player in the first round i.e. Taco Charlton, and bust. You could draft a Richard Sermon in the sixth and and have a, a, a Hall of Famer just because it doesn't matter where he's drafted. Someone said in the comment section below, if he's good, he's good. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's what it is. If he's good, he's good. And if he's not, then okay, you can move on. So the next one, Mike, Jabril the Steel Cox in the <laughs> like fourth that. round. In the fourth round, what that it, 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 he was, he was still like he was sitting there projected as a second, falls right in our lap. What do you guys think about Jabril Cox, Mike? What do, you, what do you think about the pick, how he fits onto the roster? Jabril Cox, the linebacker, I love it that he can co cover tight ends, man. Seriously, yeah. I love it that he can cover some wide receivers if need be. Um, oh, uh, steal, right? So the Cowboys left us with the head scratcher. To, to end to end day two, Saturday morning they 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 woke up and they got a steal of steals right here, Jabril Cox to start off that third day to start off that third day with the bang. Um, I, I love his cover skills. I, I love it. I, I mean, the guy has a knack to cover, and 
And and he has a knack to get balls in his hands and get some turnovers or bat some things down, too. I like that about him. I like the dog. I like the dog, Joe. But definitely, definitely a starter on this defense. Yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll definitely be in the mix there. You know, and he is a still, you know. And it's, you get him in the fourth, who's projected as a second. You know, the, the thing that dinged him was was the uh, the late surgery on the shoulder. So that's something to monitor. But uh, to come out of this, double dipping with Micah Parsons, a premium guy, Jabril Cox in the fourth, who, you know, he, he this guy could start in, on a whole bunch of other teams. So, you know, you wanted to come out of this rebuilding and fortifying your linebackers. I don't see how anybody could hate that pick. You know what I mean? Uh I don't understand that the comment about he can't tackle. <laughs> I don't understand that, man. Not one tackle, area, man. Pick up another one. Yeah, so <laughs> it is what it is there. I like to pick a lot. Like, like you said there, Mike, he can cover he can cover the tight ends. That's what you want. That's something we haven't had here, especially with uh, Jalen Smith. So if you're looking for an, an escape plan out of these linebackers that everybody wants to out of here, right? Um, you have it here with Michael Parsons and Jabril Cox. Now, they, they did skip the LVE fifth-year option, Mike. So, you know, they're saying the right things. Like, oh, well, we're, we don't, we didn't pick it up, but we're still going to work out a deal. They're not. We know these guys already. They're not going to want to pay that money. They're going to want to reallocate that somewhere else. So, uh, Mike, real quick, what, what is your thought on the on that there, the LVE contract? Is he? Is that pretty much it, or does he have a, a slight chance to come back, or what? Well, here's the deal. Here's the deal. It, uh, it, the ball's in, in Leighton Van Der Esch's court, right, because he has to ball out this year. He has to showcase his talents. A team's going to overpay, and the Cowboys are going to look even better and say, Leighton, we can't, we can't honor that deal. That's too much to match. You go ahead and go earn your money, right? So it's a win-win for Leighton Van Der Esch either way. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's a win-win, and it, it, it hopefully this will get the best out of them, especially Jalen, because you really are, man. You really. And see, here's my thing though with Jalen Smith, dude. At the end of the season, reporters were hounding him, and you know what he told him? Watch the tape, Jalen. We watched the tape. Cowboys just drafted two linebackers, <laughs> right? <laughs> we watched the tape, Jalen. You, you you better start doing something here instead of looking like Marge Simpson out there against New York Giants. Yeah, that's 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 facts right there, Mike. Facts all the way, bro. Facts all the way. So that that's your bro Cox there, the lunatic in the house. Appreciate you, bro. The fan of fans, the lunatic. Did we draft an escape plan for Anthony Brown this year? That I don't think we did, but uh, we do have more cornerbacks in here, right? So did we get another slot type of cornerback? You know, they did sign Jordan Lewis to the extension. Right? It was like a, what was it, a two- or three-year deal? What was it, three-year Jordan deal? Lewis, a three-year deal. He got the Anthony Brown treatment. Yeah, so, he yeah, both these guys, they like him in the building. I, I like – I'm still a, a more of a fan of uh, Jordan Lewis over Anthony Brown. So, did they get one for him? Probably not. But, you know, you want to get somebody that can play on the outside. And they kind of protect themselves with that, with Anthony Brown, because Anthony Brown has more experience – you know, in the NFL playing on the outside versus Jordan Lewis. Lewis has spent most of his time in the slot there. So that's a good question there, Lunatic. Very good question indeed. Very good. We had a couple of more comments in here. April Showers, you find her super chat, Joe? Yeah, soup trap in the house. Yeah, that's the thing about this. We got, we got good role players in here. April Showers, shout out to you. A loyal subscriber of the channel, the award for the best draft board, the Susu Report. Yeah, we had a we had a really fun draft board. It was a lot of fun, Mike. You know, um, obviously, it, all, all of the YouTuber communities have their favorites. They have their pet cats, and you know, and things like that. Some some people, you know, the picks go earlier, they go later. So nobody was perfect by any means, but I think we did a pretty good job, Mike, of the board. I appreciate that, April. Thank you very much for that. There. Yes, I don't know. I accept the the award. I accept the award. <laughs> Thank you, April. Shout out to you always, April, in the chat box. So let's go on to the next one there. This one here in round four, Josh Ball, another possibly more of a controversial pick over Nashawn, right? I, I would say a lot more because, mm -hmm. you know, you, you get the uh, 
I don't have a comment on him, Joe. I don't have anything nice to say about him. You have the off-field issue, you know, that he had. So what do you guys think of Josh Ball? Let's have it. Let's hear it in the chat box. I'm curious to see what you guys have to say about the Josh Ball pick. I, I, I didn't like his interview with Jeff Kavanaugh and the boys. Uh, just didn't like that. Um, he, he's, he's scum of the earth to me, and I, 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 I'm not going to talk about him. Yeah, yeah, just, just to be clear on, on my stance on him, and I have mentioned this in my videos, yeah, I definitely, you know, it, it is a, it's a it's a big thing here. You just do not beat women, <laughs> you know what I mean? Even if it's part of your past, it's, part, it's still part of his past, and hopefully he is able to move on from that. But nevertheless, that's just not something you do as a man, as a human being, to beat another human. So very disgusting acts indeed you know some of the details of that were very scum of the earth like you said there mike but um from the cowboys point of view as far as like looking at the player on the field you know when, when we analyze the player on the field which is what we're trying to figure out here today as well um is josh bell somebody that you could have in this 55 man roster we're talking about the fourth round pick here Think about some of the depth that you have right now. Ty Nisiki, you know, you have Brandon Knight, Terrence Steele. How do you see Josh Ball fitting into this roster here, Mike? Uh, I mean, he, he is a left tackle. Um, you know, I, that's where I can see him playing is left tackle. That's all? <laughs> okay. So what, what I'm going to say here about Josh Ball is that, you know, we talked about his off field. Now, on the field, what I like about it is that uh, he plays with power, plays with strength. His kick out is pretty good. You know, coming off the snap, I think it's good. So I, I think you do have something here with him as far as, um, you know, somebody that can battle it out. You know, if you're wanting to upgrade over Brandon Knight or Terrence Steele, you know, on the field now, I think he's gonna he's gonna put a, a good challenge up there. You know what I mean? And you know, you know, we're we're talking about eventually upgrading some of these positions here. You know, what's gonna happen with Tyron Smith? What's gonna happen with Lyle Collins? How is he gonna look? You know, it's been really hush hush on his recovery. You know, the Cowboys say that everything's up is good, but we'll see if these guys, you know, start, you know, the uh, training camp on the side with with the uh, you know, with the cords, then you know that something's not not fully on the up and up there. So having them here on, on the 55-man roster, I think this at right here with Josh Ball, I don't think we start to get to not guaranteed for any of these guys starting after Jabril Cox. So for Josh Ball, I think he'll have a shot. He'll really have to stay clean off the field 100%. 100%. You can't have any stupid stuff anymore, bro. Like, that's it. Now, can he beat out some of the other players, Mike? So that'll be the thing there for Josh Ball. So maybe he can make the 55-man run. Now, McCarthy said that ideally he would like some of these guys, and for Josh Ball, you know, if he could make it there and then make it onto the 48, you know, and that would be ideal. So I think they like him a lot as far as, like, on the field, you know what I mean? So we'll see what happens there with Josh Ball. What do you guys think about him? Let me see what you got here in the comments, guys. Dallas likes to roll the dice. Indeed, they do. Not only that, because he got kicked off Florida State for everything. Yeah, so that that's a good point there too. Prime time. That's that's a good point too. So he definitely has the baggage, <laughs> ugly baggage, right? So it is a rolling of the dice there. So uh, you know that that's what that is. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna cut him, but uh, he definitely he's gonna have to really. The fourth round and below, you really, you do have to make an impression on these guys. You really do. Yeah, he's he's talented there. So, Mike, let's get to the next pick here. Fifth round, Simi Fohoko, the wide receiver out of Stanford. Uh, not not much playing time, but uh, they like they like some of his traits and his specialty. What do you what do you think about Simi Fohoko, Mike? Oh, I like him that. He I like him because he's raw, Joe. I like him because he's raw, okay? And there's been a lot of, on Twitter, I don't know if it's just a Twitter thing or not, but there's been a lot of comparisons 
with Fioco and Des Bryant, and I'm telling you guys, there, there's no comparison. There's nothing to compare. When I look at Michael Gallup, I see a comparison. When you look at Simi Fioco, there's no comparison. To me, Joe, he's a taller Cole Beasley, all right? Uh, same speed, same route running capability, same hands in traffic, catching the ball in traffic. He looks to me like a taller Cole Beasley, Joe. The guy can really develop into something special, and he has the great Amari Cooper. He has the great Michael Gallup. And he has the great C.D. Lamb to mentor him. Cedric Wilson, Noah Brown, look out. Simi Fihoku ain't playing. Yeah, Simi Fihoku, I, I like the player as well. You know, you, you look at some of his film, he, and he doesn't have much of it, unfortunately. I think this is why he kind of slid as far as he did. But a blazer on the field, you know, if you want to talk about stretching the field, this is a possession wide receiver for me. I think that's why some people kind of are saying Des Bryant. You know, that was one to compare with him. But definitely, there's only one Des. There are no others. So, <laughs> Simi Fajoko, he'll be his own player. So, I like the pick. He is a special teamer guy. So, I, this is another theme here, you know, towards the end of this roster. And, uh, you know, Coach wants to get some special teamers on there. You know, I, I think we have a, a pretty good – a mix there on special teams. I think they played better last year than they have in a, in a long time, but they still have uh, some more to go there. But seeing for Hoko, I think stretch the field, use him situationally. He'll have a role on this team, and this is something that McCarthy and, and Quinn really – these were key words that they kept saying in their, their conferences, you know, role players, you know, packages for, for different kinds of players. So seeing for Hoko, four wide receiver set possibly – could they even make a look at him as a tight end, that sort of thing? He's got the height. He's got the speed, the hands, plays with power, shifty. Yes. I think the ceiling, I think he's one of these high ceiling guys. You know what I mean? He's. I think the floor is low, but the ceiling is high. So only because the ceiling is low because he doesn't have that many snaps, you know, at the collegiate level. But that means for him, the ceiling will be a lot higher for him. So yeah. I like the pick there. Now, will he make the team, Mike? So competition, when we're looking at to the the wide receiver room, how many wide receivers do they carry this year? And who will be his main competition, in your opinion, Mike? Absolutely. I think it's going to be Noah Brown and or and or Cedric Wilson. We, Pihoku, he can play special teams. So, you know. If you're looking at somebody, uh, take Tony Pollard off, take C.D. Lamb off, Simi Fahoku can be that, um, that that returner for kickoff and for punt return, Joe. So that kind of limits Cedric Wilson. That's going to limit uh, Cedric Wilson for sure because Noah Brown, he can block. <clears throat> Noah Brown, his greatest strength is blocking. And uh, four special teams in, on any unit that involves blocking for special teams. So, uh, But at the same time, though, who can be more productive out of those three, the Hoku, Wilson, or Noah Brown? Um, I, I really think Cedric Wilson could be more productive. That's going to be up to Noah Brown. How bad does he want it? But you can practice squad for Hoku, and you can still be okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is where you start talking about practice squad candidates outside of ball. I, I do think there is a spot for ball on this team, unless he just has a hiccup again, and that for, for that he's probably – he can't even have a hiccup, right? So, but for Sumi Fahoko, you you hit it on the head. The competition will be Cedric, the Entertainer, and Noah Brown. So, both players they've been here for a while. I think you they've reached their ceiling. They are what they are, you know. Although I think you did see improvement from Noah Brown in regards to his health. You know what I mean? This is the first time he stayed completely healthy. So I like that. Cedric Wilson, too. You know, he he's kind of had that injury bug. So two injury pronish type of players. It'll be interesting. You know, that's five receivers. You know, uh, Lamb, Coop, Gallup, Cedric, and Noah Brown. Do they go six receivers this year? I doubt it. They're probably going to go five yeah. again. So, so they go five again. You know, he's going to have to beat out one of these. And, and then we can't forget about Aaron Parker. This guy, the Cowboys liked him. Coming out of Rhode Island, they kept him around, stashed him away on the practice squad. He could be in the mix. So we can't forget about Aaron Parker, that other wide receiver there. So 
the wide receiver competition on the on the bottom on the bottom there is is going to be a lot of fun. It really and, is. And, and we're going to have preseason games too, so we're going to we're going to see that thing broadcast, Joe. Yeah, it's going to be crucial. It's going to be crucial for real because you're going to these guys are going to want to get those snaps. They're going to want to get out there and get those those reps. So that's a good one there. Simi Fuhoko, possibly if he can beat somebody out, if not, might end up on a practice squad. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. All right. Um, getting over to round six, Mike. We end. We're coming up on the on the end of the draft here. Quinton Bohanna. The nose tackle. Yeah, the true Sorry. nose tackle, Joe. This is – Joe, we're, we've been talking Baconator for how long? Two years? Yeah. Two years. Guys, I can I can tell you we got our Baconator. We got an anchor. We got a guy that can develop holes for Michael Parsons. We got a guy that can develop holes for Jabril Cox, Jalen Smith, Leighton Vanderesh. We got us a Baconator extra beef. Hold the pickles, all right? This guy mm -hmm. is a full force in the middle. And uh, I, I think that, that I, I re I'm excited to see this guy play um, for the simple fact that I want to see if, if he can use that weight against guys like Zach Martin, against guys uh, like, like Joe Looney or or Tyler Biadesh or Connor Williams or uh, um, the, the other Connor. You know what I'm saying? I, I McGovern. I, I can't wait to see how yeah. this guy does in training camp because – I need that Baconator with extra beef. Hold the pickles on that defensive line, and I hope he can win some battles and show the coaches that he can be that anchor in the middle. Yeah, the anchor in the middle. That, that's what it is, the, the double Baconator with cheese and all the all the fixings. So Hold the pickles. I, I, I want it all. I want it all. Like we, we can he can he crack the lineup though? You know what I mean? So it's a it's a heavy um it's it's we got a pretty good rotation in there now. You know, we're talking about Gallimore, Tristan Hill, Urban, uh, Antoine Woods, Davis. And then you got got uh, – who else is in that mix there, Mike? I feel like I'm forgetting somebody. We're talking about what, uh, the line? Yeah, your defensive tackles. I think that's about it there. So yeah, you hit it on the head. I think. Yeah. I think the guy that that he could take the roster spot would be Davis. I, I, I said this from the get-go. If he's gonna if he's gonna crack into that roster and he'll be he'll be a package player, right? So my uh Mike McCarthy and Dan Quinn, especially, especially Quinn, he said he mentioned they would sprinkle in some three, four packages, right? He didn't say that they would be three, four a base full time or nothing like that, but he would have three, four packages. So he, so there he could be somebody that has a role on the team, you know what I mean? But would that be enough to keep him on the 55 man roster? That's going to be the deal here. You know, would they have somebody that's competent enough there to be in that three, four nose tackle? I think Gallimore would probably be the, the, the one there if they did those packages, but Ooh, God. If, you, if you can have this guy who could just eat up two gaps and not move, you know, <laughs> like said, you're going to, you're going to keep some of your, you're going to keep your linebackers clean. And that sort of thing. But, man, round six, Quentin Bohanna, you know, he he fell this far for a reason. You know, one text, they typically don't get drafted that high. But, you know, Tyler Shelvin did go in the fourth. So there is a place for these giant, gigantic one text in this league. So, Mike, does he make the 55-man roster for you? I don't know. I, I, I got to see him against all pro Zach Martin. I got to see him against Connor McGovern, Connor Williams. <laughs> I got to see him against Tyler B. I, I, I want to see what he can do uh, before I can make that judgment, guys. So my answer, Joe, is to be determined, all right? To be determined, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm leaning towards to be determined practice squad as well. So I think that he's right there, you know what I mean? Like he's really going to have to shine uh, you know, in OTAs, and it starts on the 14th, right? McCarthy said the 14th. 17. So these guys – Yeah, Did he say 14? Yeah, May 14th, uh, rookie mini camp. They'll be on campus. Hopefully, we'll get a first look at these guys. So, yeah, I think it'll be interesting. I would love to have a player like that on the roster, regardless. So, hopefully, he can make it on the roster. But then you start getting down to the bottom of the roster, right? And who's in, who's out. So, for me to be determined on Quentin Bohanna, 
And I, I really, I think it's it's going to be like that for the rest of these guys. But to be determined, possible practice squad. That that's how I'm looking at at Fajoko, Bohanna. And now let's talk about uh, let's talk about the next player in round six, Mike Israel Mukuamu, the safety out of South Carolina. Mukuamu. Yeah. So they, they drafted him as a corner. Then they turned around and said maybe safety. Uh, don't really know a lot about this guy. I know that he's a dog. He told Jerry Jones on the best corner, you know, that you got all that was in this draft class. So I like the attitude. I like the mindset. The talk is cheap to me. In football, talk is cheap. All right. I'm a blood and guts guy. Can you hit? Can you tackle? Can you make a play? Can you take care of the man next to you, in front of you, and behind you? on that even side of the ball. All right. And uh, I just, I, I don't know a lot about him, but I know he has some dog. He has some, he does have some dog in him. Uh, so to me, Joe, it's another to be determined guy. Yeah. For me, it's, it's going to be, you know, they did mention safety. So that's where they like him. And uh, they did have contact with him through the process. So he said, you know, while they were looking at JC Horn, you know, at the pro day, they did talk to him and say, hey, we like you. We're interested in you and that sort of thing. So they definitely like some of his traits. It's another one of these guys that has a length, you know, um, 6'4", you know, 34-inch arms or whatever it is. And, uh, you know, he can play the ball. So that's what you like. And, and Dan Quinn did a fantastic job explaining how length affects, you know, the field. You know what I mean? Like the target zone for the quarterback shrinks down a little bit. You know, your matchups, it's all about matchups. The Cowboys, you know, have been getting exposed with with this new league of, uh, you know, these type more collegiate type of offensive, you know, powerhouses that we're seeing in the league now. So I feel that Quinn has a good background and creativity to bring this defense into the 21st century. You know what I mean? I think they've been struggling coming from Kiffin, the Marinelli, Marinelli slash uh, – Guard. Chris Richard, and now you get rid of that old guard and you bring in Dan Quinn, who he admits that he is more of a DC. He he has no interest in becoming a head coach. At least that's what he kind of mentioned in the in the press conference that he prefers to be boots on the ground with soldiers. That's his bread and butter. You like to hear that. So for Israel, you know, it, it's, his competition is going to be. You know, you, these other safeties, right? So if they're talking about putting him at safety, he's going to have to compete with, uh, you know, Darian Thompson, um, you know, some, the, some of these other guys that they brought in there, Kazee, and uh, he might he might be able to make a, a spot for himself. But it's going to be one of these other to be determined slash be tough. practice squad kind of guy. So, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. So, you get down to the nitty gritty towards the end here, and that's kind of what you're talking about. You know, you got to really show out and uh, turn heads consistent, consistently. So, Israel Muku Amu, what do you guys think about him in the sixth round? Does he make the 55 man roster, or is he a de to be determined slash practice squad player for you guys? Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Appreciate everybody in, in the. And the chat box joining us live here for our final draft overview. We're putting a bow on this draft class and how they fit into the team here, guys. Appreciate everybody here. Yeah. Great stuff. Great stuff indeed. Great stuff indeed. So got some some DBs in the house. Mike, to end the to end it here, and I meant to put seventh round, not round six. So Matt Fournier, he is a, a, a round seven pick, not six. That is my mistake there. So, Matt Farniak, the guard, Mike. What is your thought on that one there? Yeah. He could play guard and he could play center, Joe. Uh, I do like his I do like his long frame. All right. Uh, I really think the Cowboys got a good uh, – uh, uh, to me, he's not a seventh-round player. To me, he's about a, a late fifth, early sixth kind of guy. So, get him in the seventh. I really think he can – uh, I think he can play some guard for us and, and play it at a high level. I, I'm being serious at that. Uh, I, I do like his mentality. Um, you know, he's from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Fun fact, once upon a time, I was this close to moving there. <laughs> Maybe I tell you story time on one of my channels. But, uh, but no, uh, I, I do like him. I do, I do like him. Uh, 
a lot. I think he has some upside potential here. Just because he's a seventh round, I really think uh, he can probably give Connor Williams a run for his money. Yeah, so uh, for me, Matt Farniak, I think this guy probably be will, will be a practice squad guy. Now, where he would have a shot to make the, the team would be if he could beat out you know, one of your swing guards or one or one of these kinds of guys. So it's going to, this guy, it would be an uphill battle. Now where he might make a spot would be as your backup center, right? So we, they didn't really address your backup center spot. So right now we have, um, you know, Todd Biadish and then who's behind him. They didn't bring back Joe Looney, right? So, well, so who do you have behind him is my, is, is my question. So Zach Martin. So I, I, your swing center might be McGovern. You know, he they definitely gave him some snaps here over the last couple of years at center, and he he has that flex. But you know, what if you need what if you need McGovern again at some point this year? You know what I mean? Like there, you you would get a little bit thin there. So I think Mark, Matt Farnia, he comes from a good program, the Big Ten. They put out really good old linemen. You know what I mean? And 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 his. Uh, his draft projection, I think Brugler had him like as a as a six, maybe a fifth, if I remember correctly. So, you know, I think they got they got a good deal on on nabbing him here at the end of the draft. But for me, probably a practice squad guy that you can develop and see how things shake out, you know, after this year. Because Connor Williams is in a contract year, like I said. So if they don't bring him back, you're probably gonna slide in, you know, McGovern into that position. And then maybe you're gonna then you can have a spot for him in 2022. So yeah, yeah, great, great stuff there. Uh, but for him, probably practice squad. I don't know if he'll make the 55. So I'm I'm just gonna call it for him, practice squad guy for him. Good depth and D Marvel group. Good, good to see you there. Zach Pack in the house. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you for everybody that's checked us out tonight on our wrap-up show here for the 2021 draft class, Mike. I agree with um, Mario Flores there. Yeah, Mario Flores, we do appreciate you, bro. One of our great subscribers here. Thank you, man. Hopefully, you. Uh, I'm going to try to make it out to camp this year. You know, we'll see how everything shapes out here in uh, California for July or whatever. Hopefully, things are better and, you know, we can get out there. So, hopefully that. If not, I'll, I'll try to make it out to Frisco. You know, they usually do, like, the last two weeks there at Frisco. So I might, might try to catch that as well. It'll be a good time, baby. It'll be a good time indeed. Mike, your overall feel for the draft class, thumbs up or thumbs down? It's a thumbs up all day long, Joe. And the reason why, it's to me, it's a thumbs up is they double dipped at linebacker. They triple dipped in corner. They double dipped on offensive line. Uh, they, they double dipped in, in, in interior line. Joe, I mean, they, they it's like they watched the Frisco report, right? Because he said, if the draft was today, who what's the priority, Joe? We, we said corner. We said mm -hmm. linebacker. We said offensive line. We said defensive line. And that's what they took care of, Joe. That's what they drafted. So, to me, it's a thumbs up all day. Why? Because they're trying, they're trying to address the issues on this football team. Whether they got picked wrong, whether it was a reach, whether or not you like it or you do like it, they are trying to address – the biggest elephant in the room, and that was those positions. Offensive line, defensive line, linebacker, and cornerback. Stephen Jones can laugh about safety all day long because if you take care of your front seven, you don't have to worry about a safety. Yeah, and that's really just the the, the franchise. You know, they've only taken one safety in the first round ever, one time in their whole career, in the whole history, and that was Roy Williams in two thousand two. So. You know, um, we'll see what they do there. But man, for me, it's a it's a thumbs up as well. You know, you you want to turn the page on some of these Garrett guys, the soft guys, the soft boys, as the I right call them guys. These guys. And you're getting some uh, you're getting some true dogs in here. You know what I mean? And, and this is what we need. We need edge. We need some bite. We need to get on the field and and not be manhandled by the other team. I mean. That's it's just very demoralizing, you know what I mean? When the offense looks at the defense getting ate up, puts more pressure. That's why you have to do forty burger because you can't stop a nosebleed. So now, 
you know, you, you start to fortify these guys and, you know, they will contribute this year. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that these guys are going to come out and completely, you know, change this from last defense to number one defense, but you won't be at the bottom. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't even think you'll be in the bottom half. So I think um, the floor for, for this team is probably – top 15 defense pops, maybe, you know, 15 or 20, somewhere in that range. But, you know, the ceiling, um, who knows? You know, the ceiling could be a lot higher. So it's definitely something to look forward to, you know what I mean? Like this this defense is uh, – they ratcheted it up with these picks, bring on the competition. You know, uh, Mike McCarthy putting his his thumbprint on this on this team with this, with this draft class, man. He really is. I like it. I really do like it. I like it. I like it indeed. Shout out to everybody in the chat box, man. We do appreciate everybody in the chat box. Everybody that checked us out tonight, Mike. Any final thoughts before we cut out for the evening here? Yeah, guys. Uh, I promise I'm going to do even better next year for the draft. Uh, okay, you know I got the best in the best right here. Cowboys block. He puts a lot of hard work into it, um, and he helps me grow. He helps me grow. Um, so next year, guys, I might. Let's talk about my pet cats, right? So my I had three pet cats. I had Tyson, I had four. Monty Rice, Tyson Campbell, Marvin Wilson, and Felipe Franks. My pet yeah. cat. Two yeah. fell out of the draft. Two got drafted. But Marvin Wilson got the highest paid for agency over there with Cleveland. Felipe Franks over there with the Falcons. I'm going to be keeping my eyes on those guys. Going to be keeping my eye on those guys. Shout out to Ian Book. He went to the Saints. That was a big surprise to me. Yeah, that was a good one there, man. Yeah, it was it was full of surprises, right? Like some players that went higher than they than we thought. Some went later. Some went undrafted. So it's what the draft is, right? So it's all a crapshoot at the end of the day. The mock drafts, everything are a lot of fun. It's just you know I'll, I always put scenarios out there, and I'll continue to do that. I'm I'm never gonna be the one that just focuses on a small group of names, right? And yeah. so hopefully fans, you know that they'll. Uh, you know, they'll keep that in mind for next draft season. When we give them more names for 2022, I will, uh, I'm already assembling my work for the next, the draft already, you know, and then I'll, you know, we'll, we'll hit up, we'll hit up uh, those names here through the regular season. We'll drop some names to keep an eye on. We'll do something like that. Mike and I will, we'll keep you informed of who to watch during the, the collegiate season, who could be on the Cowboys radar and that sort of thing. But Mike, I think that's all we have tonight. If they haven't found you already, where can people find you, bro? Yeah, Joe has it right there, underscore Cowboys Corner on Twitter. Big shout out. Probably had like 10 followings, big whopping 1-0, and I followed all 10 back, guys. So um, follow me. You get a follow back. Uh, Cowboys Corner right here on YouTube. Watch out. There's suspect people on YouTube. You want the real deal. This Frisco Report, Cowboys Block, Cowboys Corner, they're going to give you the real deal. We don't we don't hold nothing back. We tell you how it is. And if you don't like it, hit dislike and be on your merry. But you will be back because you want the truth. Indeed. Soup trap. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's sad to think about the end of the draft. No more mock drafts, this sort of thing. But I am subscribed to Walk the Mock for the whole year. So once we get more names coming out, maybe it'll all – Maybe I'll do some walk the mocks during the regular season. We'll have some fun with that. <laughs> so I know a lot of you guys enjoyed that very much. So we'll definitely keep that in mind there. That'll be a lot of fun there. Uh, real quick. Yes. Kyle Hamilton is my safety one for 2022. If he comes out, that's your safety out of Notre Dame. And he's the real deal. He's a free safety. So keep an eye on him. He's a junior this year. If he comes out, safety one. Will the Cowboys draft him? Probably not. <laughs> they just don't want to drop safeties, but it'll be somebody to, to keep an eye on. But, guys, appreciate everybody that had joined us tonight. We'll see you here for the Frisco Report next Tuesday night, and we'll dig into the latest news and conversation about the roster. You know, we'll, we'll take a peek at, uh, at what's to come for the rest of the offseason as we get into, you know, training camp, mini camp, and all these sorts of things. But that's all we have, guys. We'll see you for the next one. Peace.